As we normally do, we'll read a few scriptures and then we'll get to the conclusion towards the end. All right, let's first start with Proverbs 14, verse 12. Proverbs 14, verse 12. I'll give everybody time to get there. Proverbs 14, verse 12. There is a way which seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. All right, let's go to 1 Kings 13. 1 Kings chapter 13, starting at verse 1. All right, 1 Kings 13, starting at verse 1. And behold, there came a man of Elohim out of Judah by the word of God to Bethel. And Jeroboam stood by the altar to burn incense. And he cried against the altar in the word of Yah and said, O altar, thus, O altar, altar, thus saith Yah, behold, a child shall be born into the house of David, Josiah by name. And upon you shall he offer the priest of the high places that burn incense upon you, and men's bones shall be burnt upon you. And he gave a sign the same day, saying, This is the sign which Yah have spoken. Behold, the altar shall be rent, and the ashes that are upon it shall be poured out. And it came to pass when King Jeroboam heard the saying of the man of Elohim, which he had cried against the altar in Bethel, that he put forth his hand from the altar, saying, Lay hold on it. And his hand, which he had put forth against them, dried up. So he could not pull it in again to him. The altar also was rent and the ashes poured out from the altar. According to the sign which the man of Elohim had given by the word of Yah. And the king asked him and said unto the man of Elohim. And treat now the face of Yah Elohim and pray for me. That my hand may be restored me again. And the man of Elohim besought Yah and the king's hands were restored him again. And it was and it became as it was before. And the king said unto the man of Elohim, Come home with me and refresh yourself, and I'll give you reward. And the man of Elohim said unto the king, If you will give me half your house, I will not go in with you, neither will I eat bread nor drink water in this place. For so it was charged me by the word of Yah, saying, Eat no bread, nor drink water, nor turn again by the same way which you came. So he went another way and returned not by the way that he came to Bethel. Now there dwelt an old prophet in Bethel, and his sons came and told him all the works that the man of Elohim had done that day in Bethel. The words which he had spoken unto the king, them they told also to their father. And their father said unto, unto them, Which what way went he? For his sons had seen what way the man of Elohim went, which came from Judah. And he said unto his son, Saddle me the donkey. And they saddled him the donkey, and he rolled their own. And went after the man of Elohim and found him sitting under an oak. And he said unto him, Are you the man of Elohim that came from Judah? And he said, I am. And then he said unto him, Come home with me and eat bread. And he said, I may not return with you, nor go in with you. Neither will I eat bread nor drink water with you in this place. For it was said to me, By the word of Yah, you shall eat no bread nor drink water here no water there, nor turn again to go by the way which you came. He said unto him, I am a prophet also as you are. And an angel spake unto me by the word of Yah, saying, Bring him back with you to your house, that he may eat bread and drink water. But he lied to him. And he, so he went back with him and did eat bread in his house and drink water. And it came to pass as they sat at the table, that the word of Yah came unto the prophet that brought him back. And he cried unto the man of Elohim that came from Judah, saying, Thus saith Yah, for as much as you have disobeyed the mouth of Yah, and have not kept the commandment which Yah Elohim commanded you, 
but came back and have eaten bread and drunk water in the place of the which Yah said unto you, eat no bread and drink no water. Your carcass shall not come to the sepulcher of your father. And it came to pass that he had eaten bread and he had drunk that he saddled him the donkey to wit for the prophet whom he brought back. And when he was gone, a lion met him by the way and slew him. And his carcass was cast in the way and the donkey stood by it. The lion also stood by the carcass. So here we see that this man of Elohim was given specific instructions to not go back the same way that he came to not eat any bread or any drink any water. And then the older prophet came and persuaded him to get him aside the course that he was supposed to already be on himself. And then the younger prophet, because he was influenced by this older prophet, he eventually got destroyed because he was already given specific instructions for him to do. And then someone else came along and distracted him and he ended up losing his life behind that. So let's go to First Chronicles. 13. First Chronicles 13, starting at verse 1. First Chronicles 13, 1. And David consulted with the captains of thousands and hundreds and with every leader. And David said unto all the congregation of Israel, if it seem good unto you, that it be of Yah Elohim, let us send abroad to our brethren everywhere that are left in the land, all the land of Israel, and with them also. Uh, also to the priests and Levites, which are in their cities and suburbs, that they may gather themselves together unto us. And let us bring again the ark of Elohim unto us, for we inquired not at it in the days of Saul. And all the congregation said that they would do so, for the thing was right in the eyes of all the people. So David gathered all Israel together from Shahar of Egypt, even unto the entering of Hamath, to bring the Ark of Elohim from Kiriath Jairim. And David went up in all Israel to ba Baalah, which is Kiriath Jairim, which belonged to Judah, to bring up thence the Ark of Yah, the Ark of Elohim, Yah, that dwells between the cherubims, whose name is called on it. And they carried the Ark of Elohim in a new cart out of the house of Abinadab. And Uzzah and Ahio drove, drove the cart. And David and all Israel played before Elohim with their might and with their singing and their harps and psalteries and timbrels and with cymbals and trumpets. And when they came to the threshing floor to the Kadon, Uzzah put forth his hand to hold the Ark for the oxen stumbled. And the anger of God was kindled against Uzzah, and he smote him because he put his hand to the ark. And there he died before, his, before Elohim. And David was displeased because Yah made a breach upon Uzzah. Wherefore, that place was called Perez Uzzah to this day. So we say Uzzah was having good intentions of moving the ark of the covenant, but he was not supposed to touch it. Only certain people were supposed to touch the Ark of the Covenant. So turn over to uh, same book, 1 Chronicles 15. 1 Chronicles 15, starting at verse 1. And David made him houses in the city of David and prepared a place for the Ark of Elohim and pitched it for a tent. Then David said, none ought to carry the Ark of Elohim but the Levites. For them have Yah chosen to carry the Ark of Elohim and to minister unto him forever. And then let's drop down to 13. For because you did this, you did it not at the first. Yah Elohim made a breach upon us, for that we sought him not after the due order. So Uzzah died because he was not qualified to touch the Ark of the Covenant. Only certain Levites, the sons of Kohath, were qualified to touch the Ark of the Covenant. So in summary is the, the importance of following specific instructions. Uh, sometimes we get ahead of ourselves and we do things which we may not be qualified to do ourselves. 
So we have to make sure that we have been given a command to act out a certain order that we don't out overstep our boundaries and we get ourselves in trouble with the most high. I yield, hallelujah, shabbat shalom. Wow, um, shabbat shalom, shabbat shalom, uh, Adon. Um, outstanding warning, outstanding warning. Um, and I hope everyone heeds the warning. I just wanna touch on something you said about us uh, knowing what to follow specific instructions. Um, that's key because I believe we all here want to serve the Most High. We want to do things for the Most High, but sometimes we are not the ones that's been called or appointed to do certain things. And so sometimes when we're trying to do someone else's function, we may mess it up or we may do something the wrong way, or, or we just may be punished by the Most High for doing something we, we weren't called to do. Um, and I know a lot of times in, in, in settings when there's a lot of us, you know, uh, everyone won't be able to speak. Everyone won't be able to do certain things. And sometimes we all want to or may want to, but the most high may have some that's already appointed for his purpose. And so I think that was a very good warning because we all have the, the, the desire to please the most high. We all have the desire to bring forth his word, but it's a time to be a babe and to learn and to take it in and to know what it is I am supposed to do so I can know if I'm actually doing the right thing um, as the most high commands and not just based upon tradition, a custom of what I, how I think it's supposed to be. But as, as Zakan Yaakov saying, there's an origin of certain things. And if we get back to the origin and to the customs, we may find that what we want to do is not even for us to do, but we should be praying for someone else to actually do their job well. So total for that. Also in reference to the part about the, uh, about the prophets that he brought out, and this is something we need to be mindful of. And this is the reason why we must study the word. Everybody today want to be a prophet or a prophetess. Everybody today want to tell you something that the Most High told them to tell you. And I'm going to tell you the majority of them that's proclaiming that the Most High told you to tell them something. The Most High ain't tell them to tell you nothing. They don't even have the laws of the Most High. The Most High ain't even talking through them, right? But we see in the text a warning and an example how there was a prophet who the Most High gave a specific duty and task, told us specifically where to go and how to exit a place and what not to do. And then you had another prophet that was a prophet also that came to him as Kanak got brought out and told him to do something contrary to the word of the Most High, that the word of the Most High had already been spoken to this other prophet. Now, when you go back and you read the story that Kanak was pulling out, that other prophet really didn't hear from the Most High to tell him to do that. You know, sometimes there is a thing called jealousy, which we can see all through the scripture, or someone may not like, well, why is he speaking to this young guy? He can be speaking through me, I'm here. And so he, he was just trying to cause him to go off. Be mindful that even in your walking on your journey, the adversary will sometimes come and try to have you question your journey. He will have someone else come that will tell you something different and you know you've already read in the word as Kanak God said, you've already read what it says do. And then somebody come and say, you don't have to do that. And you will listen to them just because they're older, they're elder, or they call themselves a prophet or a prophetess. Make sure we know what Yah commands us to do and just do that. So I think that was a great uh, two minute warning. Um, Kanak Yah, as well as an ouch moment, uh, um, ouch, you know, because that steps on my toes. We have to be very mindful. Um, we have to be very mindful of who we're around and, and, and who's saying what to us. And the Most High is giving you direction. You need to stick with the direction. Don't let someone switch the direction um, if it's taking you off of a course that Yah's already revealed his Ruach in. So, Toda Adon, Toda, hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right, Mishbaka, we're going to now open the floor for a uh, testimony. It's a halal yah moment. If anyone has any praise on their heart to give to the Most High, we're now going to open the floor for praise and worship. Hallelujah. I like them hands going up fast like that. Okay, Akoti Shakira, the floor is yours first, Akoti. Shabbat shalom, Shabbat shalom. I want to give all honor and esteem to my Father, Yah, that's in heaven, and also honor him in honor him as my covering i have a song that's been on my mind that i want to sing and i want to um give my praises Same to y'all today all right <clears throat> i'm not the best singer so y'all just be mindful all right okay and it goes like this when you have troubles don't cry oh no 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 just remember 
the yah is standing by. Thank you, yah. Thank you, yah. When you have heartaches, don't cry. Oh, no, 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 no. Don't you worry. Don't be discouraged. Because Yah is standing by. Thank you, Yah. Thank you, Yah. Yah is standing by. Thank you, Yah. Thank you, Yah. So there's no need to worry. And don't cry. Thank you, Yah. Thank you, Yah. Yah is standing by. So there's no need to worry. And don't cry. Thank you, Yah. Praise Yah. That is my song for today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, and thank you, y'all. Thank you, y'all. Hallelujah. All right, Iman Newkirk. This is my song. This is my song, my song, my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story. This is my song. Praising our Lord. All the day long, trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy than Yahuwah, than to trust and obey, trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy than Yahuwah, than to trust and obey. We say yes, Yahweh. To your will and to your way, we say yes, yeah, yes. We will trust you and obey. When your ruach speaks to us, when your ruach speaks to us, when your ruach speaks to us, with all the grace and our answer will be yes, yeah. Great is thy faithfulness. Oh God, my Father, there is no shadow of turning with me. Thou changest not thy compassion, fail not. As thou hast been, thou fail not with me. Great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. I see, I see, I see. All that I need, thy hands have provided. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Young to me. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. All praises, all praises. Ima Shoshana. All praise is Shabbat Shalom, Miss Baka. All praises and honor and esteem to the Father. I am enjoying Shabbat so much from the time I got up this morning until now and just praising and dancing before the Father is just awesome. And I, I just want to comment on the cultural uh, lesson. It was so divine. Um, I remember about the name. Um, I remember commenting about how my name is Susan and the father gave me my name of Shoshana, revealed it to me. And it was in 2017 is when he said, your name is Shoshana. So as your comment gave me revelation about my name being changed when it was, putting, on a, putting me on that path of a purpose that the father has put me on. So I give me clarity of why that time and the timing of everything and what has conspired since then. So praise Yah for his revelations, for his teachings and for his vessels. All honor and esteem to Yah. Hallelujah. Ayu. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Akoti Talia. 
Sabbat shalom, Sabbat shalom, everyone. I want to give praise, glory, and honor to Yah. I want to thank Yah to spare my life and to spare, thank you for sparing all of us life today that's on this call. Hallelujah. Um, I want to sing a song, but first I want to read this scripture in Isaiah 55, starting at six. It says, Seek Yahuwah while he is to be found. Call on him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him turn, return to Yahuwah who have compassion on him and to our Elohim for he pardons much. Hallelujah. In this song I want to sing. Reach out and touch Yahuwah, for he passing by. You find him not so busy to hear your heart's cry. He passing by this moment to hear your supplies reach out and touch yahuwah for he passing by reach out and touch yahuwah for he passing by you find him not so busy to hear your heart's cry. He passing by this moment to hear your supplies. Reach out and touch Yahuwah for keep passing by in this one this is just a short one i want you wake because yeah i want you shake because yeah don't let it be too late because we want to make it in the due time before the heaven door closed i want you wake because yeah i want you shake because yeah don't let it be too late because we want to make it in the due time before the heaven door close. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to his name. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Please wake us and shake us, y'all, before it's too late so we can make it to your set apart kingdom. Hallelujah. I told her for that, Ima Audrey. Shabbat shalom. Um, I just like to say that I give all honor and all esteem to Abba, and I just say Toda Yah for giving us a day of rest. Uh, Shabbat is my favorite day of the week, and I know if it's because I just enjoy not doing anything, but I just enjoy the whole day. And I wanted to refer back to something I said last night about Yom Torah how much joy we had and, and you know how good the word and everything, the fellowship and everything was. And it spilled over into the following day and eventually filled over into the entire week. And the thing that we don't understand is there's a spirit connected to these feast days as well as there was a spirit connected to those holidays that we used to keep. On the following day, um, well, one of the coaches came home with me and spent the night. And then one of the emails had called her and said, well, you know, I want to stop by. And she stopped by. And then another one of the emails called and said, are, are you going to be home? And I said, yes. She said, well, my niece is going to be in town. And I, I want to know if I can come. It's like, well, come on. We're family. Come on. And then um, the young lady from Fayetteville called and said um, she was at the hotel. I want to know if she could swing by. She came by. And none of this was planned. But all that, you know, we listened, we, we did the prayer, we listened to prayer online and listened to the, uh, the the little short question and answer segment or what have you. And it's just so much joy. And it reminded me of how it used to be with my family during the holidays, whatever. 
And it was just so much love and so much joy. And I'm, I'm just so grateful for that. I mean, it's just such a wonderful feeling. And um, Elder Newkirk, I'm going to borrow part of your song that you and Ema just sang. And I'm just being led by the spirit. This was in my spirit all morning long. And I'm going to do the chorus. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Abba all the day long. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Abba all the day long. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you for that uh, encouraging um, testimony and praise report, Ima. All praise on the be to the most high. Hallelujah. But yet, Francis. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Um, first, I want to give all praise, honor, and esteem to Motaya again, because I can't do it enough. And I want to honor my ish yeah. as my head covering. I had a song. Um, and as I was flipping to the psalm to read the English version before I uh, sang the Hebrew, um, I had a special placeholder in my in my um, in my Bible in my Hallelujah scriptures that whenever it opens to that special placeholder, I um, I always read it. And so um, as I was flipping through, it opened to Tehillim or Psalm seventy nine. And so um, I'm gonna sing my song real quick. <clears throat> which is Psalms 44 and, and 8. Um, it's um, Be'elohim hilanu kol hayom ve'shem chale olam no de'selam. Um, and Elohim, I will praise all day long. Um, and I'm going to... Uh, read Psalm 79. It's This is from the Hallelujah Scriptures. And this is my, uh, this is my praise. <clears throat> A Psalm of Asa. O Elohim, the Gentiles have come into your inheritance. They have defiled your Kodesh Hekal. They have turned Yerushalayim into ruins. They have given the dead bodies of your servants as food for the birds of the Shamaim, the flesh of your kind ones to the, be to the wild beasts of the earth. They have poured out their blood like water all around Yerushalayim with no one to bury. We have become a reproach to our neighbors, a scorn and a mockery to those who are around us. How long, O oh Yahuwah, would you be enraged forever? Would your jealousy burn like fire? Pour out your wrath on the Gentiles who have not known you and on rains that have not called on your name. For they have devoured Yaakov and laid waste his pastures. Do not remember against us the wickedness of our fathers. Let your compassion speedily meet us, for we have been greatly weakened. Help us, O Elohim, of our deliverance, for the sake of the esteem of your name. And deliver us and cover over our sins for your name's sake. Hallelujah. Why should the Gentiles say, where is their Elohim? Let the vengeance of the outpoured blood of your servants be known among the Gentiles before our eyes. Let the groaning of the prisoners come before you according to the greatness of your arm. Preserve their, those appointed to death and repay to our neighbors sevenfold their reproach and to their bosoms which, with which they have reproached you, O Yahuwah. And we, your people, and the sheep of your pasture, we give thanks to you forever. From generation to generation, we show forth your praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Akoti, Teresa. Praise and honor unto the Most High. Uh, today, I just wanted to come before his presence and just tell him, thank him for his goodness and how great he's been to me. Um, I was thinking um, about Psalms 150 when it says, praise ye Yah. 
Praise Yah in his sanctuary. Praise him in the firmaments of his power and praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Let everything that have breath praise ye Yah. Praise ye Yah. I thank God just for everything that he's done in my life. Uh, thank him for all the spiritual things, how he's blessed me. I thank him for all the physical things, just the small things. Uh, we may look at it small, but food, clothes, shelter, for how he's blessed my family, for how we all woke up just morning. Um, we haven't heard of any tragedies that I know of. And I just want to thank him right now. I want to thank him for his greatness, for his goodness, and for his wonderful mercy. And I praise him that he sent his only begotten son, the Messiah, to die for my sins, that I might have eternal life. And I thank God. Y'all keep me in your prayers. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And may the most high continue to increase in your life, my sister. And may he continue to lead and guide you and bless you with all you have need of. Oh, hallelujah. Eat my rose. Ema, if you're speaking, you're, you're still muted. Ema, we Shabbat still Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. I, I, I would like to sing a song. And this was on my heart this morning while I was just waiting and preparing myself for Shabbat. And it is. I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his court with praise. I will say this is the day that Yah has made. And I will rejoice. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. He has made me glad, he has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. He has made me glad, he has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. I just wanna give honor to the most high y'all. I just wanna say thank him. I just wanna thank him for another Sabbat. I just want to say thank him for the culture study this morning and the two minute warning. It did enlighten my eyes about the custom. And I thank y'all for that. And I just thank y'all because this giving me another chance just to praise him, just to say, I thank him. I thank him for his mercy. I thank him for his peace. And I thank him for the family, and I yield. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Adon Michael. Shabbat Shalom. Cast thy burden upon the Lord, and he shall sustain thee. He shall never suffer the righteous to be moved. As for me, I will call upon Yah, and Yahuwah will save me. Evening and morning and at night will I pray. And cry aloud, he will hear my voice. I just give y'all all praise and all glory. I just feel so sustained by him, just so steady. My life hasn't always been steady, but I feel steady today. And I know it's all because of Yah and this Torah. I thank him so much for it. I was speaking with someone on yesterday and I was thinking back to when um, Ima Shoshana was talking about how we're all in different places and she said something like, 
some of us are infants and some of us are toddlers and some, I was thinking like adolescents and some are teenagers and some are young adults. And I began to think like, okay, y'all, so I'm an infant. And I began to just picture myself like, just like a newborn baby that's just laying up in their parents' arms. They just lay back. I mean, they just resting. They ain't trying to fight where they are. They ain't trying to pull up too soon. They ain't trying to do too much of nothing. They just know, you know, this is where I am. I'm settled here. I'm all right. Everything's fine. It's all lovely. And I just thank y'all today that that's what I'm like. I'm like, I'm just laying back in his arms. I'm not trying to do too much. And I got fingers and toes and a mouth. It, I don't know how to use too much of anything, but I'm fine <laughs> where I am, just knowing that I'm resting and I'm in his divine care. And in that place, I feel so settled and so safe. And I just say hallelujah for the place that you have me in, Abaya. I am so grateful. I take it not lightly and I take it not for granted. I just allow myself to just be in this place, resting in your great care. And I yield. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you for your song. And I definitely want to thank you for your words, uh, the visual that you just paint it for us in our mind. Um, and it ties right in with Kanakia's two minute warning about knowing what Yah has for us to do. And when you're a baby, like you said, a baby doesn't really do much around the house, but enjoy the love of the parents and get filled, get taught, they learn, you know, and a lot of times uh, what we've seen today is too many people that don't even know the truth or understand it yet, trying to do things that they don't even understand that they're doing. And so, as you just said, when you put it in that form as a babe, when you first come to these truths, the first thing to do is just absorb, uh, get that colostrum, get that, you know, uh, whatever the breast has as you own the breast, get all the nutrients that you need to renew your ruach, you know, and as you start to grow and we start to grow, then that's when we start to do. But first of all, just learn, take it in and start applying to self before trying to run too fast and do too much. So Toda, Toda, Yah, for uh, your uh, song, as well as your words. Praise be to the Most High. Uh, at this time, Mr. McConnell said, all honor and esteem be to the Most High for this Shabbat day. Uh, Toda, Yah, for his Torah, which he leaves for us to read on his Shabbat day. Toda, Yah, that we've all been safe through the storm, and we're still able to have a Kodash Mikra, which is a holy convocation, or gathering together as his believers, his children, sons and daughters. So I just thank y'all for that. And I thank y'all for my, my Isha, my Yaladin. And I thank y'all for my spiritual family here that's scattered uh, into different, many different cities and states. Um, and I love you all. Toda y'all for each and every one of you. Hallelujah. Um, at this time, I will say, Shema Yisrael, Yahweh Eloheinu, Yahweh Akkad, Wahabatet, Yahweh Eloheka, Bekal Lababaka, Ubekal Nefeshka, Ubekal Hero Israel, Yahuwah, our Elohim, Yah is one. And you should love Yah, your Elohim, with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your might. And these words which I command you this day shall be in your lab, but shall be in your heart. Hallelujah. Blessed to you, Yahuwah, our Elohim, King of the universe. Blessed to you, Yah, our Creator, our Father. Blessed are you, the set apart one of Israel the Elohim of Abraham, Yitzhak, Wayakob. Father, we just thank you for restoring us on this yom, on this day, on this Shabbat. We thank you for creating the day as such that we could come together, Father, and just rest and just absorb your word and allow you to renew our minds and our hearts as we apply ourselves to study your word, as we come into the Shabbat willing to receive your word. Father, we thank you for this Shabbat day. Father, we thank you for family that we have to have a Kodash Mikra, a holy convocation of gathering with, that we, Father, can study your word together. We can worship together. We can praise you together, Abba. And we can feel the love of you within us, Abba, through one another. And for that, we say, Torah Rabbah. Father, I ask you to forgive us for our sins, transgressions, and iniquities, 
as we are trying to come into your presence, Abba, we know we need to be clean. So I ask you, Father, would please blot out our sins, transgressions, and iniquities that we have done ignorantly, Abba, not knowing you and the things that we're trying to work through, Abba, as we're trying to return unto you. Father, please continue to be merciful and gracious upon us and allow us the time to get things right that we may become perfect and mature in you, O Yah. And for this, we say total rabah. Father, we thank you for life, strength, health, food, shelter, and raiment. And Father, we just ask if you will outpour your ruach upon us on this day that we may have wisdom, knowledge, and understanding that the words that you speak into our lab and to our heart on this day, Abba, will be used for transformation within us, Abba, that we will be the men and women that you called us to be, that place where we will call lo ami, not my people, we will be called lo ami, speak out, we will be called ami, which is my people. So Father, when we weren't your people, because we were in sin, we ask, Father, you continue to renew us a new heart within us that we can be your people, Abba. And we just thank you for all your grace and your mercy that you bestow upon us. And Father, we just ask you on this Shabbat to forgive us for our sins, transgressions, and iniquities. Father, for all those who have suffered during the storm in Cuba, in Florida, or whatever cities or states, Abba, we ask of you to provide for them that which they have need of, Abba. And Father, we just thank you for protecting us, keeping us safe, Abba, that we are able to Esteem your name on yet another Shabbat. Father, I ask it for those who are sick, struggling with any type of stress or issues, worration. Father, I ask you give them shalom and comfort and peace in their heart on this, your Shabbat day. Blessed to you, Yah. Blessed is your name, Yah. And blessed is he who comes in your name, Yah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen, wa amen. Hallelujah. At this time, we have the reading of the mitzvot or the reading of commandments found in the book of Shemot, chapter 20 by Don Kanakia. So we could have the reading of the commandments found in Shemot, which is commonly called Exodus, chapter 20. And Elim spake all these words, saying, I am Yahweh, which I brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. You shall have no other him before me. You shall not make unto you any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down yourself to them, nor serve them. For I, Elohim, am a jealous El, visiting the people of the fathers upon the children into the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and show a mercy unto the thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. You shall not take the name of Yahweh in vain, for Yah not hold him guiltless to take his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shall you labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of Yahweh, and in it you shall not do any work. You, nor your son, nor your daughter, your manservant, nor your maid servant, nor your cattle, nor your stranger that is within your gates. For in six days Yah made heaven and earth to see it all amidst, and rest the seventh day. Wherefore Yah bless the Sabbath and holiday. Honor your father and your mother, that your days may be long upon the land which Yahweh give you. You shall not murder, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal. You should not bear false witness against your neighbor. You should not covet your neighbor's house. You should not covet your neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his donkey, nor anything that is your neighbor's. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Again, Mishra Shabbat Shalom. All right. So, you know, we're in the Moedim season. Um, you know, some are observing uh, Feast of Tabernacles at the moment. Some are just coming into Yom Teruah. Uh, some have just finished Yom Teruah and preparing to enter into Yom Kippur or Day of Atonement. But we are not here to judge when anyone has kept it as long as they're trying to acknowledge and we're trying to return back to the Most High. So with that, I hope everyone has been enjoying their feast season. If they're in the feast season, if they're just coming out of their feast season, if they're preparing for uh, the end, end or closing feast, of atonement and Sukkot. Uh, shalom Aleichem unto all and may the peace and blessings of the Most High be upon you. Um, but the main focal point is these feast days are very important. And as we have been stating that uh, these feast days keep us Yah centered, Yah focused, Yah minded, all right? And these feasts are annual feasts which comes around each year, okay? At an annual time, they come around yearly. And so if we've been missing the mark, these feasts start to tell us that we need to get ourselves back properly in tune with the Most High, his instructions and his Torah. So they are very important. And we know that the world has commonly been teaching that the laws are done away with. You have to do none of that. But we know that it's not true because the Most High has given us very specific 
days of Moedim that we should keep. And as Iman was saying her testimony earlier about just how the, the Ruach of the feast has been carrying over for her all week from Teruah on, it's just been a great Ruach, a great feeling, the love of, from being in the presence of the Most High, being in his will, doing what he calls us to do, and then seeing how you have Mishpachah that the Most High joins to him and joins to you, that y'all are able to keep these feasts and these times together as a Mishpachah, which for those that are not familiar with the Hebrew terms, which is family. So we give him all honor and esteem. We'll be starting off today. Um, Kanaki, if you would, give for me the book of Why You Cry, Leviticus chapter 23. Saw Yohanan, I'm going to need your help today. I have quite a bit of scriptures to cover. If you can get for me Daniel chapter 9, Saw Yohanan, Kanaki, I get for me Leviticus 23, or Why You Cry 23, we'll be starting at 26. Because we are just finishing Yom Teruah, and we're preparing to come into Yom Kippur, which is the Day of Atonement, um, this upcoming week, praise be to the Most High. And we've already covered that atonement means to cover or to blot out or to pardon a transgression. But there's something that has to be done in order for us to be atoned for or to fulfill what we need to do in order to be forgiven of our sins, transgressions, and iniquities. We've covered just last night and study how the church have said these things are done away with because they don't know the customs of the Most High and they have no idea of how important this day is and what it actually represents. And it's a high day. It's a high set apart day. Okay. And it's a day when we need to fulfill or do what the Most High commands us to do so that we can receive the barakah or the blessings that comes along with observing the Day of Atonement and also understanding its importance. So, Kanaka, if you would, let's start at the book of Why You Cry, which is going to be Leviticus chapter 23. Leviticus 23. And we're going to be starting at verse 26. So, Yohanan, I want you to have for me the book of Daniel's nine, and we'll be starting at verse one. Kanaka Leviticus 20, 23 and 26. When you have it at dome, please read. And Yah spake unto Moses, saying, Also on the tenth day of the seventh month, there should be a day of atonement. It should be a holy convocation unto you, and you shall afflict your souls and offer an offering by fire to Yah. And you shall do no work in that same day, for it is a day of atonement, to make an atonement for you before Yahweh. For whatsoever soul it be that shall not be afflicted in that same day, he should be cut off from among his people. And whatsoever soul it be that doeth any work in that same day, the same soul will I destroy from among his people. You shall do no manner of work. It should be a statute forever throughout your generations and all your dwellings. It shall be unto you a Sabbath of rest, and you shall afflict your souls in the ninth day of the month at even. From even unto even shall you celebrate your Sabbath. Hallelujah, hallelujah. So we just finished with our culture portion right before we went into this portion. And Zakane was establishing culturally things that Israel would do and how the culture or the customs that Israelites have, they originate with the father himself, right? Such as reading the Torah, reading the Torah on Shabbat, teaching the Torah, that was something that he called Moses to do. He told Moses to teach it. And that was something that was established by the Most High that these commandments are taught. He had a day that was set aside for teaching of his commands, which was going to be the day of synagogue, the day of the Shabbat, which is the day of worship and coming to synagogue, or how Knesset, or commonly called church, whichever term one may be familiar with. But there's also other culture or customs or traditions, or I would like the term instructions, that the Most High has left for his people also. And in the teachings of Moshe, that the Most High told him to teach to Israel, he told them what the more deem or the appointed times of the Most High were. So in the pagan mindset that we come up under, there's been a lot of pagan traditions and customs and days that we observe and keep that are custom of the Roman Catholic Church. It's custom of paganism. It's not the customs of the Most High. It's not the instructions of the Most High. So he gives us in the book of Why You Cry, Leviticus, the 23rd chapter, his moedim or his appointed times that he wants us to keep and to observe. And it says, and Yahweh to Moses also on the 10th day of the seventh month, there should be a Yom Kippur or day of atonement. It shall be set apart convocation unto you and ye shall afflict your souls and offer an offer made by fire unto Yah. And it goes on to say that whatever soul that does not observe or keep this day shall be cut off from amongst his people. And it says, you should keep this day as a Shabbat because it is a Shabbat unto you. 
So we know that Shabbat, you're supposed to do what? Keep set apart or commonly called holy. There are certain ordinances that we must do on a Sabbath day. There are ordinances that we must do on Yom Kippur. One of the things that we was covering last night that we're going to cover again, that one of the things that most High want us to do on atonement and one of the things that it's known for is afflicting your nefesh or afflicting your soul, all right? So I'm not going to go into the full detail teaching on that as we did last night and previously, but I'm just going to touch and go a little bit. So we know that the word there for afflict is anah. The word for afflict is anah. And so when you look at that word anah, it gives you several uh, meanings and definitions. It is to make yourself low, to humble yourself, uh, to, to give yourself some type of suffering. So it's to make yourself low, to humble yourself on the day of atonement. So it's a day that you afflict yourself and it's a day of humbling. There's a question that comes up a lot of times as to how do you afflict your soul? So that is a question that we have to ask. So as I came was teaching during the culture portion, when we look uh, according to tradition and customs and culture, we would see that our forefathers would actually zoom or fast on the day of atonement. They would afflict themselves on the day of atonement. And as we covered last night, precept upon precept, line upon line, here a little and there a little, is where we gain the understanding of the word of Elohim. So if right now we don't understand what afflicting our soul is, we can go through the text and we can look at what some of our forefathers did and how did they actually afflict themselves, all right? So let's jump first of all. So we need to understand that we have the Day of Atonement coming up. Some are presently or currently in the Day of Atonement. Some have already kept it. But we're in the season. We're in the appointed season. And we're all laboring to try to get back to that which the Most High called us to as one. But for us who are preparing ourselves, we need to be preparing ourselves to humble our hearts, to bring ourselves low, to submit totally to the will and the word of the Most High. So let's move to the book of Daniels, chapter one. I see got Daniel chapter nine. Start with verse one. Sorry, honey. Kanaki, I have ready Leviticus chapter 19. But sorry, Johanna, Daniel chapter nine, start with verse one. Okay, turn it on. Daniel, also called Daniel, chapter nine, starting at verse one. In the first year of Darius, the son of Assyria, of the seed of Medes, which made king over the reign of the Chaldean, in the first year of his reign, I, Daniel, understood by books the number of the years. Well, for the word of Yah came to Yemayahu, Yer the prophet, that he would accomplish 70 years in the desolation of Jerusalem. And I set my face unto Yahuwah Elohim to seek by prayer and supplication with fasting and sackcloth and ashes. So let's hold it for a moment. So we see that this is the time period where Daniel is now already in a form of captivity. He's in a captive state, but it says he also understood by books certain things that would take place. And the word of God came to him, letting him know about a 70 year prophecy or situation or desolation that would take place. Meaning that's not gonna be a good time period in the history of Israel. That which is gonna come, that which is gonna happen to y'all, it's not going to be good. It's going to be negative. But the reason why Daniel was in captivity as it was, the reason why Israel at this time was already in captivity and was continually going into captivity because of sin, because they did not hold fast to the Torah or the law, statutes, commandments or obedience to the instructions of the Most High, the traditions and the customs that the Most High set before them, they always preferred traditions and customs of man. All right? They, instead of serving the one Elohim, whatever was going on in other lands, they would learn those customs and they would do them. So the Most High got upset with Israel and the way he would punish Israel is by putting them into captivity. But so now when Daniel is seeing and he's hearing about this desolation on Jerusalem, verse three, he says, I set my face unto Adonai Yahweh to seek by prayer, supplication, and fasting and sackcloth and ashes. So the Most High has revealed to me what is gonna to happen to his people because of what we've done. I understand already why we've been in certain conditions previously, why we're in the condition we're in now and what's to come 
I need to seek the face of the most high. Because what Daniel's, this is our forefather. Here's how they thought about things when they knew trouble, they were in trouble or trouble was coming upon them. This is how our ancient forefathers was thinking. I set my face unto Adonai Yahweh to seek by prayer and supplications. And supplications is being in that, that real prayer. Like I'm really getting into this. I'm crying out to the most high. Father, I'm here. I'm below you. I have no place to turn. I'm He's putting this all into coming to the most high, denying himself. You're the only one that can deliver. You're the only one that can answer. So he's coming straight to the most high. Supplication and fasting and sackcloth and ashes. So sackcloth is the type of clothing they would wear when they fast, right? So we, you're seeing here that when he heard this news from the most high, as the word came to him, he went to the most high by prayer, supplication, and fasting. This is serious business. Pick up at verse four. And I pray unto Yahuwah my Elohim and made my confession and said, Oh, yeah, the great and dreadful Elohim, keeping the covenant and mercy to them that love him and to them that keep his commandments. We had sinned and had committed equity and had done wickedly and had rebelled even by departing from your precepts and from your right ruling. So, hold, so in his prayer supplication, while he's fasting, what is he talking about when he's fasting? What does he talk about in this prayer? I prayed unto y'all, my Elohim, and made confession, made known, I'm saying what we have been doing wrong. And said, oh Adonai, the great and dreadful Elohim, keeping the covenant and mercy to them that love him and them that keep his commandments, which is already written in the book of Shemot, the Exodus, which cannot be read today in the commandments. We have sinned and have committed iniquity and have done wickedly and have rebelled even by departing from your precepts and from your judgments. We departed from you. We departed from your instructions. I know by what these books say, I've received the word of you that this desolation is going to come upon Jerusalem. I need to pray. I need to fast. I need to supplicate unto you because of the sin. I understand why sin is coming. So if our forefather understood what was coming on Israel because of sin, and he fasted, then if we as an individual have to get myself together as an individual, have to get my house, my wife, my Yaladim, and my children before any other household together, I need to be thinking like my forefather Daniel did. I need to understand this. I have to do something different than what I normally do. I have to give my all, I have to give my total being to the most high for this mess that we've got ourselves into. We have sinned and committed iniquity and have done wickedly and have rebelled even by departing from your precepts and your judgments. Pick up at verse six, Adon. And Verse 6, neither have we hearkened unto your servants, the prophets, who spoke in your name to our kings, our princes, and our fathers, and to all the people of the land. Oh, yeah, righteousness belongs unto you, but unto us confusion of faces, as this day to the men of Yehuda and to the inhabitants of Jerusalem. And unto all Israel that are near and that are far off through all the countries which you have driven them because of their transgression, that they had transgressed against you. Oh, yeah, to us belong confusion of faith to our kings, to our princes, and to our fathers because we had sinned against you. To Yahuwah, my Elohim belong mercy and forgiveness, though we have rebelled against him. Neither have we obeyed the voice of Yahuwah our Elohim to walk in his Torah, which he had set before us by his servant, the prophets. Yea, all Israel had transgressed your Torah 
even by the pardon, that they may not, not obey your voice. Therefore, the curse is pulled upon us in the oath that is written in the Torah of Moshe, the servant of Elohim, because we had sinned against him. So let's pause it for a second. So in his repent of type prayer, in his confession type prayer that he's making on behalf of Israel, he's saying, we have not listened to your Torah, your law. We have not listened to your prophets. When you get to the brick Kadashah, what did the Mashiach say? Do not think that I've come to do away with the law of prophets. Traditions and customs of men, a Roman Catholic church doctrine, paganism, he heathenistic customs have our people thinking that the laws is done away with. When the sent one himself said, think not, don't even put that in your mind that I will ever tell you not to do Torah. In the brick Kadashah itself, it says what? Study to show yourself approved. What is it for us to study? As we've covered historically, traditionally, customarily, the only thing that was written during the times of Mashiach, the only thing that was written during the time of the Talmudim of the disciples was the Torah and Tanakh. That's what they had to study. And he said, do not think that I come to do away with that. Don't even get that in your mindset. You have to do that. So now if you to study to show yourself approved, what must you study? The word of Elohim. You must study the Torah and Tanakh because written therein is the history of the covenants, the law, statutes, commandments, and the history of the conditions of our children or our people for breaking the law, statutes, and commandments of the Most High and what they had to do for the Most High to allow them to return to him or for him to bring them back unto him. And so the law is done away with doctrine. That's wicked as all. Get out. That's keeping us separate from the Most High. When you look historically, and when you look at captivities, this is what they had to return to. And Daniel understood this. He said, we did not listen to the Torah. We did not listen to the prophets. And you who are merciful, you are the merciful Elohim. You are the one who can deliver and who can save us. But we did not listen to you. And we did not listen to your prophet that came with your voice or in your name with your word. We refuse to listen. Call up the last verse you was at and continue to read. And read verse 11 for me one more time. Read verse 11 one more time. Okay. Verse 11. Yea, all Israel had transgressed your Torah, even by the pardon, that they may not obey your voice. Therefore, the curse is poured upon us in the oath that is written in the Torah of Moshe. Hold here. So have y'all are y'all familiar with that term? The God of the Old Testament is a mean God. He's not a God of love. That's a lie. As Moray Baruch said, sin, <laughs> there's always a lot the root of sin because sin is a lie. But the truth will abound and will outshine and will always prevail and will always stand. The most high ain't mean. The most high is a father. The most high said, I love you. I created you. I provided for you. Here's what I want you to do so you can be blessed. He gave us instructions. And as a father, he told us, but if you break these instructions, here's what will happen to you. So in verse 11, as Daniel was saying, because we have broken your commandments, because not you changed on us, and not because you a mean God, but because Israel transgressed your laws. They will not hear your voice. Because of this, the curse is poured out upon us that is written. That as it is written is something key that we need to start paying attention to. Because a lot of us is going in the wrong direction for a whole lot of stuff that's not written. <laughs> it's doctrines of men. We need to go back to what's written as it's written so we can have a proper understanding of what the Most High wants from us and what we must do to return back to the favor of the Most High. So he said, because Israel transgressed and did not obey your laws, they rebelled against it. That is why I'm acknowledging. That is the reason why the wrath is being poured out upon us because it's written what would happen if we turned against your instructions, if we turned against your law, statutes, and commandments, if we rebelled against your Torah. Continue to read it, Dawn. Verse 12. And he has confirmed his word, which he spoke against us and against our judges that judge us 
by bringing upon us a great evil for under the whole heaven has not been done as has been done upon Jerusalem. As is written in the Torah of Moshe, all this evil is come upon us. Yet may we not our prayer before Yahuwah our Elohim that we might turn from our equity and understand your truth. Therefore, as Yah watched upon the evil and brought it upon us, for Yah our Elohim is righteous in all his works, which he does, for we obey not his voice. As it is written once again in the Torah of the law of Moshe or Moses, all this evil has come upon us, yet made we not our prayer before Yah. All this stuff is coming upon us. All this wickedness and the thing that we want to say is God is not just. Yah is not just. The God of the Old Testament is a mean God. No, the God of the Old Testament is love. The love of Elohim is written in the Torah. He is love. We, mankind, are not love. We break his law, statutes, and commandments. The promises of the blessings are written therein if you do right. And the curses are written therein if you do wrong. We can read it, we can comprehend it, but we rebel against it. And when now the curses are poured out upon us, we want to blame the Most High for our sin, for our rebellion, for our disobedience. Then you said, we did not cry out unto the Most High. We didn't even consider, we didn't even pray to the Most High to ask for forgiveness. So again, back to the point, Daniel at this time, after hearing the word of the news from the Most High, he said, I entered with prayer, supplication, and fasting. And now you see the confession he's doing is what we need to be doing right now. We need to be getting, we need to be acknowledging and knowing so that when the day of atonement comes, when we enter into our fast, we get this mess out of us. But we already should have it out of us, but still bringing it before the Most High and acknowledging it and saying, Most High, please forgive me for my rebellion. Forgive me for my disobedience. Forgive me for my lack of understanding. Thank you, Abba, for waking me up to acknowledge Yom Kippur. Thank you for waking me up to acknowledge your Torah. Thank you for your grace and your mercy, which endured forever with the proper understanding of that. Other than that, just said in the church, that's just a quote. His mercy endured forever. What does that mean? That means that the God that they're saying in the Old Testament is mean, the same quote comes from the Old Testament, the Tanakh itself. His mercy endures forever, which means he was merciful in the beginning and he's still merciful. What does it mean that it endures forever? The fact that he gives us an opportunity to repent. As we covered last night, the most I said, he don't want to kill none of us. He don't want to pour his wrath out on us. But if we refuse to repent and change, then he has no choice but to do as he said he would do. Because we're walking against him. Call up where you had a donor, continue to read. And now, O oh, Yah, our Elohim, that has brought your people forth out of the land of Mizraim with a mighty hand and has gotten you renowned as if the day we had sinned, we had done wickedly. O oh, I deny, according to all your righteousness, I beseech you, let your anger and your fury be turned away from your city, Jerusalem, your set apart mountain, because for our sins and for our for the equities of our father, Jerusalem and your people are becoming a reproach to all that are about us. Mm. Now, therefore, O Elohim, hear the prayer of your servant and his supplication, and cause your face to shine upon. Your sanctuary that is desolate for Adonai's sake. O oh, Elohim, incline your ear and hear, open your eyes and behold our desolation in the city which is called by your name. For we did not present our supplication before you for our righteousness, but for your great mercy. O oh, Adonai, hear, O oh, Adonai. Forgive, O oh Adonai, and hearken and do and defer not for your own sake, O oh Elohim, for your city and your people 
a call by your name. So again, in this confession that Daniel is doing, he's again calling all this unrighteousness that they've done out before the Most High. He's letting them know how they've done wickedly in the sight of the Most High. He says in verse 17, now therefore, O our Elohim, hear the prayer of your servant and his supplications. Who is Daniel praying for real quick, Mishpachar? That's right, that's correct. Somebody give me an answer real quick. Just I'm your mic say, who is Daniel praying for right now? Israel. I just want y'all to keep that in mind. I just want y'all to think I'm leading you in any way. So Daniel is one man praying, but who is Daniel praying for? Israel. He's praying for everyone. I want you to keep that in mind. Now, therefore, O oh, our Adonai, O oh, our Elohim, hear the tefillah or the prayer of your servant and his supplications and cause your face to shine upon the sanctuary that is desolate for Adonai's sake. So please hear my tefillah, Abba. Please hear me. Please shine upon your sanctuary. O oh, my Elohim, incline thine ear and hear. Open thine eyes and behold our desolation and the city which is called by your name. For we do not present our supplication before you for our righteousness, but for your great mercies. We know we ain't righteous. But we come and we come now we supplicate before you because we asking for your mercy. We know we messed up. I, at least I do. If everybody else don't, I know we messed up. But now I'm supplicating unto you. Please hear my tough like Abba on the behalf of the nation of Israel. 19, O oh Adonai, hear. O oh Adonai, forgive. O oh Adonai, hearken and do. I'm going to read that part again. O oh Adonai, please, Shema. O oh Adonai, please forgive. O oh Adonai, hearken and do. Defer not for thine own sake, O oh my Elohim, for thy city and your people are called by your name. Father, please hear us. Please hear our prayer. Please, Abba. Abba, please forgive us. This is what Daniel was doing when he humbled himself before the Most High. From hearing that troubling news of the desolation that was going to come, here's what De Daniel was praying to the Most High. He prayed, supplicated, and he what? He fasted. He didn't have time for nothing else. All I have time to do is get on my face before the Most High, put my, my sackcloth on, and have my ashes and my head to the ground, praying to the Most High. That's an example to us. But again, because we are not raised up in the traditions and customs and culture of our fathers or our forefathers, we just want to say, oh, God, please forgive me for my sins. I'm sorry. Put no effort. No sincerity about it. Daniel put forth a lot of effort. Continue to read it, Don. Verse 20, and while I was speaking and praying and confessing my sin and the sin of my people, Israel, and present my supplication before Yahuwah, my Elohim, for the set apart mountain of my Elohim. Yea, while I was speaking in prayer, even the man Gabriel, who I had seen in the vision at the beginning, being caused to fly sisterly, touched me about the time of the even appellation. And he informed me and talked with me and said, Oh, Daniel, I am now come forth to give you skill and understanding. Yeah. At the beginning of your supplication, the word came forth, and I, come, and I am come to show you, for you are greatly beloved. Therefore, understand the matter and consider the vision. So Daniel, of course, we see he's wanting to understand what he's seeing. So now, a Malachim or the man Gabriel came to him and said, look, you're beloved of the Most High. You're gonna, I'm, we're going to give you skill. The Most High is going to give you skill and understanding for you to be able to understand what's going on. Because the Most High seen that Daniel did what? Open himself up to the Most High. Daniel was supplicating. Daniel humbled himself. Daniel afflicted himself before the Most High asking questions as well as also doing what? Confessing the faults of Israel. 24. Twenty-four. Seventy weeks are determined for the people 
in the set apart city to finish the transgression and to make an end of sin and to make atonement for equity, to bring in everlasting righteousness and to seal up the vision and the prophets to anoint the holy of holy. Now and understand that from the going forth of the word to return and to build Jerusalem until Mashiach. Hold up, they put Mashiach here. Yep, yep. Mashiach. That's what Mashiach, the, the prince, in seven weeks, in 62 weeks, returned to Dillinger, building the wild street in the times of distress. So, so, so let me pause for a second. See, culture, customs, and traditions get us all, even on this side. You know, no, Mashiach was there. That, that's what's written there. Mashiach or Mashiach. That's, that, that's what's there, though. So don't, don't even worry about that. See, that's why we're saying that about traditions, customs, and cultures. And as Kanak, I gave a great two-minute warning about a prophet was told something, then another prophet came to him and told him to do it contrary to the way the most I said do it. We ourselves can either get consumed in each other's good or bad behaviors, good traditions or bad traditions or customs. So that was written there, okay? So that's, we're not gonna focus on that, but I heard you say, oh, they got that written. No, they didn't edit that. That's what was written in Hebrew, all right? But let me uh, go back. It says, 70 weeks are determined upon the people upon the set apart city to finish the transgression and to make an end of sins and to make in the KJV. Now what Joe translation had is better than the KJV, which I still like the word reconciliation, but it says reconciliation. But for those that only read KJV, that think the laws are done away with, what they don't understand is that word that for reconciliation, it's the same word for atone or kapoor or the cover. Reconciliation has to be made by what? Atonement. There has to be an atonement for sin in order for us to be reconciled to the Most High. That atonement of reconciliation for iniquity and to bring in everlasting righteousness and to seal up the vision and prophecy and to anoint the most set apart of Kodash. Know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem unto the Mashiach, the prince shall be seven weeks and three score and two weeks. The street shall be built again and the wall even in troublous times. 26, last verse. Twenty-six, and after sixty-two weeks, Mashiach is cut off, but nothing of the holy city is ruined, and the people of the prince come the end of which is in a flood, even to the end of the battle. Devastation is determined, and the strength of the covenant multiplies for one week, and in the middle of the week, the sacrifice and the oblation cease upon the end. Abominations destroyed until the consummation is determined. Okay, so let's stop here. Over the reservation. So let's stop here, Don. Thank you for that reading. And I'm not going to get all the way into the weeks like I want to right now, because that's going to be another topic for another time. But we're seeing here that there's a prophetic word that was given to Daniel about something that was going to come, troublous times that was going to come on his people. But we see that because of the sin, we see that when Daniel came before the Most High, he came with prayer, supplication, and fasting. So he humbled himself with prayer when he came before the Most High and he started acknowledging sin. And this tribulation that was going to come, the Most High said there's going to be a time where there's going to be an end put to sin and all these things. So I just want to cover this because this is what our forefather Daniel heard and a Malachim or a messenger of the Most High, whose name was Gabriel, had to explain to him or let him know that you are beloved of the Most High because you are doing what you're supposed to do. And you know how to humble yourself. You know how to cry out to the Most High. And this Daniel prayed for all of Israel. Keep that in mind. Uh, let's jump forward. Kanaka, I know I said Leviticus 19. Uh, 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 hold that, Kanaka. Uh, but before you get that, if you would, jump to Leviticus, sleek out. Matthew chapter 17, verse 14. Can I want to touch something else on fasting real quick? And then we're going to go forward. Matthew 17 and 14. And then we'll be going to Leviticus chapter 19. As a matter of fact, saw your honey, you get Leviticus 19. We'll be starting at 15. But right now, I want Kanak got to get, Levi I mean, Matthew chapter 17. And 14, um, Kanak, 
Matthew 17, verse 14. And when they were come to the multitude, there came to him a certain man kneeling down to him and saying, Master, have mercy on my son, for he's a lunatic and sore vexed. For oftentimes he falls into the fire and off into the water. And I besought him to your disciples, and they could not cure him. Then Yahshua answered and said, O faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him hither to me. And Yahshua rebuked the devil, and he departed out of him, and the child was cured from that very hour. Then came the disciples to Yahshua apart and said, Why could not we cast him out? And Yahshua said unto them, because of your unbelief. For very last said to you, if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, you shall say unto this mountain, remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. Howbeit this kind goeth not out, but by prayer and fasting. So before I go forward, can anyone share with me why they would believe that I'm going here in reference to a fast on atonement? And if not, that's that's fine. I'm, I'm going to go into it, but I just want to see what y'all seeing here and why am I focusing on this as we're preparing for our fast going into atonement. I'll give you a moment to read back over it. Um, I think that, um, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. I think that what he's talking about, when Yeshua was talking about the um, the fasting and praying, you know, because that's part of uh, the torment um, or Yom Kippur, we have to fast and pray and in order to get strength or to, to continue growing in faith and stuff, you know, we have to learn to start fasting and praying and seeking the most high Yah for um, guidance and through Yeshua. Okay. And I, that's what I gathered, the fasting okay. and the praying. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Ima Shoshana, thank you for that. The power of fasting brings out the things that are in us that we don't know that are there. And it helps us. When the body is weak, the ruach is stronger. And it flushes out these things that we're not aware that are in us. So through the fasting and the prayer, it reveals these things. And it has the authority. We get the authority to cast it out of us. Hallelujah. I love, I love it when the plan goes together because th those two statements that we just made sound like they go hand in hand together. Probably because we just read the same word together. Hallelujah. So thank you for both of y'all mm -hmm. words. Hallelujah. And I see a Koti Talia. Hand was up. No, I was going to say, I'm, 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 um, I'm back on what um, Ima Sashana said. That's what I said because certain things that's in us are the sin and some of these sins are spirit that being stubborn in us mm -hmm. so we have to use prayer and fasting to get these things out of us and also have faith when we pray hallelujah hallelujah i coach you Misha, i believe that's you for yours shabbat shalom Mr. Ta. um i was also gonna highlight um what a copy tally i just said the last part of um what she said about having faith. The Messiah also rebuked the, um, the disciples because they're unbelief. So when we pray, we have to believe. When we fast and pray, we have to also believe that we're going to receive um, what we're asking for, what we're seeking the Father for, and be Amen. sincere. So I yield. Hallelujah, hallelujah. So as a couple of them have already touched on, the belief, the belief is going to be key. You have to have faith in the Most High for anything to do you any good in this wall. You have to believe that he is, you have to believe in his word, you have to believe in his power and his might. So you have to have that, that's one. But this type, when I came, as, 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 as we are started out, how be this kind go not out, but by prayer and fasting, they were trying to cast an unclean spirit from off of the young man. And in the Greek, that's a long word, demionion, however they pronounce it. <laughs> and they said the demon or the shaitan or the devil that had him. It wasn't just he had a mental illness. He has a shot or a spirit on him that's negative. What do you think sin come from? As Ema said, the holidays we used to keep had a spirit attached to them. 
And she said how the Ruach of Teruah has been with her all week. As Elder Herman made the most I bless his memory, said there's a spirit of truth and a spirit of error in the earth. The spirit of truth is the set of heart spirit of the most high. And the spirit of error is going to be from the adversary that always tries to get us to go against the commandments of the most high. So in order for us to cleanse ourselves, we first have to have faith and believe. I have to believe that the Torah is the word of the most high. I have to believe that the day of atonement should be kept. I have to believe that the most high told me to afflict my soul and I must do it. I must believe that if I do it, why I'm believing in doing it and I'm obeying to the best of my ability, I have to believe the most high will free me or deliver me or cover my transgressions. But I have to believe and I have to do it. Because as it says in the Brick of Shah, not the hearers of the word are justified, but the doers of the word are justified. If you have faith in Yah, you do what Yah says do, not man. So in order for us to get some of this stuff out of us, we have to believe that we have to come to Yah and be obedient to his word. And he said, this type comes not by uh, just from just doing nothing. It comes by prayer and fasting. So to get some of our ways out of us, some of our sinful nature out of us, we need to deny ourselves. We need to deny, afflict, or humble ourselves. This is customarily in the Hanat we've read about Daniel. Now we see Mashiach telling the Talmudim, the reason why y'all couldn't get this cleanliness, this unclean spirit off of this guy, y'all didn't go prepare yourself to do so. So if you have to prepare yourself to get it off of somebody else, what you think you have to do for yourself? Deny yourself and give yourself totally to the will of the Most High. So I want to go here about the fasting and prayer. Kanaka, why you there? Well, we'll come back to that point. So now let's move forward. Let's go to why you cry, Leviticus chapter 19. So we see in that, that fast was to help them do what? Rid of unclean spirit and they say what? That prayer, the supplication, as well as fasting. We seen that when Daniel knew that destruction was coming, that he humbled himself, he fasted and he prayed to the most high and he acknowledged and he confessed the sins of Israel. We know that bad ruach, shy spirits, demons, whatever one want to refer to it as, it joins itself to us by the duration or the long period of time that we've been in sin, which now converts our spirit either into a negative if we're in sin or we renews and returns to a positive if we're in Yah. But because we've been in sin for so long, in order to repent of that sin on atonement, we need to do what? Deny ourselves, afflict ourselves. But I want to show you all another affliction as well. So the fasting affliction for us is something that we know customarily and we do and we keep, but we need to understand why we're doing it. But now I also want to show you another affliction. <laughs> and when we get to it, y'all going to see that it is a form of affliction. And I just want you to remember when I asked the question, who did Daniel pray for? Just keep all this in mind as we continue to go forward. Because while we're fasting and praying, we need to learn to ask the most high, what else in me do I need to do? Because see, when we return into tradition and custom and to the Torah of the most high, as Maury Haney always said, this is a heart transplant. We still need our hearts renewed more and more and we need to grow more and more. So there's another side of affliction that we're going to start focusing on. Let's go to Why You Cry. I think I switched to the Saw Yohanan. Kanaki, I want you to hold the book of Matthews. Saw Yohanan, get me um, Why You Cry, Leviticus 19. And we're going to be starting at verse 15. Why You Cry, Leviticus 19. And start with verse 15, Adon. Okay. Why You Cry. Also called Leviticus chapter 19, starting at verse 15. You should do no unrighteousness in judgment. You should not respect the person of the poor, nor honor the person of the mighty, but in righteousness, you should judge your neighbor. This is a commandment. We are to do no unrighteousness in judgment. You are to be righteous in judgment. You are not to be a respect of persons. I don't care if it's an elder, I don't care if it's an imam, a moray, a bishop, a deacon, whomever, if it's leadership, if we are in error, 
You can't take the side with somebody just because of a position, a duty, a title, or your love for an individual. If anyone or someone is wronging someone, we who are standing as witnesses must make sure we're doing judgment righteously, right ruling. That's another thing me and Maury Haney, I talk about a lot in our journey and years together. Our people don't like right ruling. People will turn on you anytime you talk to them about right ruling or the right judgments of the most high. Continue to read it on. 16. You should not go up and down as a tail bearer among your people. Neither should you stand against the blood of your neighbor. I am Yah. You should not hate your brother in your heart. You should in any wise rebuke your neighbor and not suffer sin upon him. You should not avenge nor bear any grudge against the children of your people, but you should love your neighbor as yourself. I am Yah. All right, so here's, here's something that, you know, we need to focus on. You should not go up and down as a Rahil or a tail bearer. And a tail bearer is one that slanders. They call him also the former or a person that carries tail for a negative purpose for a negative reason, to expose or to try to make someone look bad, is tail bearing and speaking negatively, negatively of someone. You shall not go up and down as a tail bearer among the people. Neither shall thou stand against your blood, speaker, against the blood of your neighbor, I am Yah. So if you see someone about to be done wrong, you're not supposed to stand with a party to do harm or wrong to someone. You're supposed to warn or help or defend those defenseless individuals. You shall not hate your brother in thine heart. You shall in any wise rebuke thy neighbor and not suffer sin upon him. As Moray Baruch brought out, we're all reading from the same book. We're all reading the same Torah. But we have so many different understandings. There's not change amongst us. It said you shall not hate a brother in your heart. How is it that if you don't attend the same Knesset, Kahal, assembly, synagogue, church, camp, institution, whatever term you want to put on it, why is it that if we don't attend the same location, you have a somewhat of a hatred for me because I ain't with y'all. You can't say shalom aleikum, peace be upon you to me. And you look at me strange because I don't have on your colors. We're supposed to be different than the people of the world. But we're coming over here with the word of Elohim and acting worse than the people of the world. You shall not hate your brother in thine heart. You shall in any wise rebuke your neighbor and not suffer sin upon him. Here is something that we have to have in, 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 in our mindset. We are commanded to rebuke one another. But do you know what happens when you rebuke your brother or sister? who's not ready to receive rebuke or correction, they hate you, they turn on you, they slam and they tell bear your name while in error. And here's the part of the affliction that we're gonna have to endure. While coming before the most high on your own Kippur, while your name is being slandered, for you being obedient to Torah, you're still going to have to love your brother or sister that's slandering your name. Do not allow a person that's bitter against you to turn you bitter against them. You still love them. That's a form of affliction. That's a part of what we have to put up with. Daniel was doing what? Praying. There's a reason why I asked that question. Who was Daniel praying for? A whole bunch of wicked people. But Daniel was beloved by Yah. We know that when Daniel was in that land, Daniel still served Yah, while others were submitting and giving in to what was going on around them. So Daniel was beloved by Yah, and Daniel probably was slandered by some of his own people, but Daniel was still righteous. He still what? Knew what Yah was going to do, and he still did what? Prayed for the wicked ones of the, of the community or the nation of Israel. You should not avenge nor bear any grudge against the children of your people, but you shall love your neighbor as yourself. I am Yah. So you should not 
bear any grudge. You should not avenge. You should not want to get them back. And we have flesh. And sometimes it is hard not to want to say something or get somebody back. But the most I said, we're not to avenge nor bear any grudge. You, you shouldn't even hold a grudge against someone that's slandering your name. Don't hold a grudge. Pray for the individual. And hopefully before it's too late, as the sister sung on a song, hello, y'all, before it's too late, y'all, before it's too late, change us. Give us an opportunity to be renewed so that we can make it into your set apart kingdom. That's what we should want for our brothers and sisters. But I'm going to tell you, literally, on this call, not those that may view it online. I'm talking to those that's amongst us right on this call. There are some of you, and I'm pointing at me too, I'm into you. There are some of us that we may have a hard time still praying for someone that's wronging us. I've been there, done that. <laughs> so if I'm stepping on your toes, don't get mad with you. It ain't nothing personal. I can just speak from experience sake. It is hard <laughs> to deny yourself that part of yourself that wants to avenge and get someone back. It is hard to get that part of yourself that wants to hold a grudge because what someone is doing, it is hard to get that side of yourself in subjection to a nah, to submit, to humble or flick to the word of the most high. But coming into Yom Kippur, whew, we have to learn that even though they may slander, even though they may be against you, pray for that brother or that sister. Because we've seen Daniel do it. We've seen Moshe do it or Moses do it. And we know they was coming against Moses. Goodness gracious, they was coming against Moses. But Moses still said, listen, Father, forgive them. He still prayed for people that was against him. That's an example for us. But that was also an affliction for Moshe or Moses also to have to be in a position to do so. Let's drop that. Now let's go to the book of Matthew or Matthews. Chapter of, uh, uh, well, before we go to, um, uh, Kana, yeah, go to 1 John chapter 4 and 20 through 21, and then we're going to come back to Matthew chapter 5. Go to 1 John. What's my time looking like? Okay. Kana, yeah, give me for me 1 John first, and then we go back to Matthew chapter 5. So 1 John 4, and I want 20 through 21. First John 4, verse 20. If a man say, I love Elohim and hate his brother, he is a liar. For he that loveth not his brother whom he have seen, how can he love Elohim whom he have not seen? Again, this word is sharper than any two-edged sword, and it cuts asunder, and it reveals the intent and the purpose of the hearts of men. Sometimes people are upset when you quote the word, because sometimes in our thinking that we know something, or we are more righteous than we think that we are, and making our boast of keeping the commandments. There's a whole lot of commandments we got to learn to keep. Loving your brother is one of them. It says, if a man say, I love Elohim and hate of his brother, he is a liar. How many of our people you see walk around holding up but hatred and anger in their bosom? But make the boast of keeping commandments. What commandment are we keeping? To love thy neighbor as thyself to love thy brother, thy sister is a commandment also. So if a man say, I love Elohim and hate of his brother, he is a liar or she is a liar. But he that loveth not his brother whom he has seen, how can he love Elohim whom he have not seen? And this commandment have we from him that he who loveth Elohim love his brother also. That's that affliction that I'm talking about we got, we got to get to now also. Because it is so hard to love a brother or sister that does not show you kind behavior. It is very hard to love a brother or sister who is mistreating or slandering, mistreating you or slandering your name. It is hard to do. Trust me, I know, I know. I was struggling with presenting this today. <laughs> we, we all still grow. We all have that correction that we have to receive. But this is what it's telling to the believers. The Torah is supposed to make us new. It's supposed to make us different even than our brothers and sisters. 
sister's enemies because they become our enemy or view you as their enemy. You're still not their enemy. You're still their brother or their sister. So pray for them. Afflict yourself and say, most high, well, I'm asking you to forgive me. Please forgive the brother or sister that's wronging me, that's mistreating me, that can't acknowledge their sin, transgression, or iniquity, or the offense that they've done unto me. Please forgive them. And Father, please help me in my lab or in my heart to let it go. And we have an example of that. King David. King David ain't do Saul. I didn't mean Saul any harm. Saul continually slandered David's name. Saul came for David. Saul was going to kill David every chance he got. But King David said, I will not touch the anointed of the Most High and do him no harm. And he showed Saul time and time again, who has you coming at me like this? I mean you no harm. Stop acting this way. But you know what was in Saul? That shy, that evil presence was in him that he did not humble himself. He did not afflict himself. Apparently, he ain't fast on atonement. He didn't deny himself to repent of all the stuff he was doing that the prophet told him that the Most High told him not to do. Apparently, he never repented to the Most High of those things, and he kept growing more and more in sin, which caused him to become a negative individual. And the more evil he did towards David, David still had nothing but the best in heart for Saul. But I don't want to get anybody confused. The word says, if it be possible, be at peace with all men. David never once went back into the company of Saul. He didn't hold dislike or anger in his heart for Saul, but he said, that, but as for me, I know the intent of Saul. He's shown me over and over again, even when he said it would be different, he would come right back and do the same thing again. I'm not subjecting myself to that type of harm, but I still mean him no harm. So me staying away from him does not mean I don't still love him. It's just I'm not going to put myself in position for him to hurt me or for me to actually have to defend myself and hurt him. So understand with this word, Mr. Kai, it's also a balance. Sometimes when you actually do what the word says, people will still look at it like you're full of hate. When no, you're full of being safe and circumspect. You're being prudent about your goings and your comings. You know who to associate with and who to disassociate from. All right? So let's drop that, Kanaki. I told out for that reading. So now... Let's go to Matthew Yahu and Matthews. So we, we, part of our affliction that we have to do also is being able to muster up the ahab or the love that we've been teaching about to still love those that actually may actually have a hatred towards us. Matthews 5 and 21 is where we're going to start at the dome. Matthews 5 and 21. Matthew 5, verse 21. You have heard that it was said by them of old time, you should not kill. And whosoever shall kill shall be in danger of the judgment. But I say unto you, that whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of the judgment. And whosoever shall say to his brother, Rechah, shall be in danger of the council. But whosoever shall say, you fool, shall be in danger of hellfire. Therefore, if you bring your, your gift to the altar and there remember that your brother have ought against you, leave there your gift before the altar and go your way. First be reconciled to your brother and then come and offer your gift. So we see here, you've heard what was said in old times. Thou shall not kill and whosoever shall kill shall be in danger of judgment. But what we see here, as we've already covered, what the Mashiach did was he made the Torah actually more disciplined. <laughs> yeah, we know that if somebody killed, you know, there's a punishment coming for that. So, you know, killing is like a major offense. And whosoever shall kill shall be in danger of judgment. So if you murder someone, you should definitely be in danger of judgment. But what the Mashiach say? But I say unto you that whosoever is angry with his brother without cause shall be in danger of the judgment. If we are walking around full of anger for our brothers and sisters without cause, and the cause that we think is cause is not a valid cause, we best learn to let that go because we're in danger of judgment. 
He says, without cause. There's some people that are angry and full of anger without valid cause, without valid reason. And that produces another emotion that can now produce an act of harm to a brother or a sister, such as slander, tailbear, or even murder. And when you slander or tailbear, that is a form of murder also because you're killing someone's name or character. You're making others view people in a negative light that's not even negative. You're making people that's beloved of Elohim be frowned upon by others because you're angry without cause. We can't be like that as true believers of the Most High, as true, obedient Torah keepers. Drop it now. It says you bring your gift to the altar and you remember that your op or your akoti has an issue with you or ought to get you, go and try to get that thing right. Leave your gift here. Go and get that right. Be reconciled. And then you come back to the altar and then offer your gift. So what the Mashiach is trying to say is, yes, there's things that you must do and bring to the altar. But when you come to the altar, come with the correct mindset. Don't just be offering and your mind and your heart is not right. Offer with the right heart and with the right mind. Leave thy gift before the altar and go thy way first. Be reconciled to thy brother. Then come and offer thy gift. Drop down to verse 43, Adon. Same chapter. Give me 43 through 48. Verse 43. You have heard that it has been said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say unto you, love your enemies and bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you. And pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. That ye may be the children of your father which is in heaven. For he make of the sun to rise on the evil and on the good. And send of rain on the just and on the unjust. For if you love them which love you, what reward have you? Do not even the publicans the same. And if you salute your brethren only, what do you more than others? Do not the publicans also. Be therefore perfect, even as your father, which is in heaven, is perfect. Hallelujah. So what is he telling us here? To love your enemies. This is a form of affliction, Mr. Rikai. I'm telling you to love your enemies. Do good to your enemies, those that's persecuting you. Now, because Israel rolled together, we know that the enemies he's talking about is your brothers and sisters that become your enemy as Saul became David's enemy. As we've seen Israelites turn on Israelites all throughout the text of the Torah, Tanakh, we've seen it. But we've also had the example of those that were doing negative to, to, to said people or individuals. And then we have the example of those that was actually showing that they were of the Father. It said if we love somebody that love us, what are we doing more than the publicans or the rest of the world? We're doing no different. We're doing the same thing. We're supposed to be better than, we're supposed to go beyond what the natural man does. We have to afflict ourselves so to the point where I have to ask for something good for somebody that's asking for something negative upon me. I have to ask the most high to please forgive them for they know not what they're doing. Please release the yoke of your time from off them that they may repent before it's too late and they don't make it into your set apart kingdom. That need to be my prayer. Why they write and say, make them fall, make them sick, make his marriage break up, whatever they proclaim on you. You have to be different than that because you love them. Because you see an example of Moshe, who his cousins, his cousins was going to try to put him to death because they wanted his position. That's in the script. His blood relatives was against him for righteousness sake. Now we do know that they got dealt with, yes, but that's what Most High did. But still, Moshe still went with his duty as the Most High called him to do and walked in the spirit of love. Yeah, he did get a little frustrated. 
He got a little angry. He messed up uh, just a little bit. But boy, he had composure. He held that thing for a very long time. That's what we have to have as we prepare for Yom Kippur, that same type of love and compassion. Let's prove all things. Jump to the book of Tehillim of Psalms. 35. Star Johan, if you get that for me real quick. Tehillim of Psalms 35. I'm sorry, y'all. I know I gave y'all some scripture, but sometimes I have to go <laughs> where, where the Ruach leads and I had to switch course. So just a little bit. Let's go to Psalms uh, chapter 35. Give me verses 11 through 16. Hey, though. Tehillim, also called Psalm chapter 35, starting at verse 11. False witness did rise up. They led to my charge things that I knew not. This is King Dawi, the King David speaking. So he said, false witnesses did rise up. They laid to my charge things that I knew not. Continue to read. They rewarded me evil for good to the sprawler of my soul. They rewarded me evil for good. I'm being good to them, and they reward me evil. No matter how good I'm trying to be to them, they lie on me, they slander my name, and they are they don't mean me any good. They mean me nothing but harm to the spoil of the mind of the to my soul. Even my soul is getting a little bit spoiled or bitter from what they're doing to me. Read on. But as for me, when they were sick, my clothing was sackcloth. But as I for me, my soul. But as for me, but as for me, when they were slandering my name, when I was being good to them and they were mistreating me and only trying to do evil to me, says King Dawid to King David, my soul was a little spoiled, yes. But as for me, when they were sick, my clothing was sackcloth. What does that mean? When they were sick, those that slandered my name, those that lied about me were saying things that I didn't even know they were saying about me, those that did not mean me any good. When I heard they were sick, I put on my fasting clothes. I cared about them. I cared about their well-being. I went to cry out unto them to the most high. So I put on sackcloth. I did what else? So don't continue to read. Back to verse 13. But as for me, when they were sick, my corner was sackcloth. I humble my soul with fasting and by prayer returning to my own bosom. But as for me, when they were sick, my clothing was sackcloth and I humbled myself. I anah, I depressed, I made low myself. How? With fasting and prayer. Line upon line, line upon line, precept upon precept, here a little and there a little. We have seen how our forefathers went to the Most High on occasions. We have seen, they have told us how they afflicted themselves. If someone had an evil ruach or was full of sin, they fasted, they prayed, the Mashiach told them. When the Most High told Daniel what he was going to do, Daniel said, I pray, I supplicate it, and I fast. And he confessed the faults or the sins of the nation of Israel before the Most High and asked the Most High to please hear my prayer. When the people that was doing King David wrong, those that hated him, those that slandered his name, those that were tail bearers against King Dawid or King David, he said, better for me when they were sick. My clothing was sackcloth. I annihilate or I humble or I afflicted my soul with Zoom or fasting and prayer and returned it to my own bosom. I fasted, I prayed on their behalf. He afflicted himself for someone that was against him. So, Mishpaka, though we look at fasting as afflicting our souls, it is. But I tell you another way you afflict your soul when you are fasting for somebody else who does not even mean you any good. For you to love your brother and your sister as yourself who is slandering your name, tell bearing, mistreating you and mean nothing but evil towards you. Mashiach say, 
love your enemies. Do good to them that persecute you. Pray for them. And so any New Testament concept or principle, as you know, I always teach, originates where? In the Torah or Tanakh. So the very thing that Mashiach was saying about pray for your enemies, he didn't come up with that of his own self. It's already written in the Tanakh. King David said, for those that meant me harm, those that talk negative about me, that slandered my name, that did not mean me well, they troubled my soul. Yes, they did. They troubled my soul. But when I heard they were sick, my clothes became sackcloth, and I, I, not, I, humble, I afflict my soul with fasting and prayer. Give me a little bit more of that, Adon. Continue to read. Verse 14. Verse 14. I behave myself as though we had been my friends or brothers. What? I bow down heavily oh, oh, and for I, the mourns for this brother. Oh, 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 Aki. I said, what? Read that again. I behave myself as though he had been my friend Who? or brother. Who? The enemy. The enemy. My brother or my sister that became my enemy, that slandered my name, that's coming against me, that only want to see bad for me, that hates my guts, that troubles my soul. When I heard they were sick, I put on sackcloth, said King David, and I am not a humble or I afflicted my soul with fasting and prayer for them. And I behaved myself as though that enemy of mine was my friend. Come on, shake your head with my seat. I, I got to shake my head too. This is hard. <laughs> this is hard affliction. But now if we continue to ask the most how to renew our hearts, to renew our mind, and to create a new ruach within us, here is the other part of the affliction that we have to learn to do. That as the Mashiach said in the Brit Kadasha, that some may not receive, that origin of that thought process originates from King Dawid himself. It's in the Torah. He's being obedient to the Torah. He prayed for his enemies as Mashiach said do. These brothers and sisters was his enemy and he said, I prayed and I fasted for them and I behaved myself as they were my friends. The same way I'm gonna pray for Zakay and Yaqua. I'm praying for little tail bear. The same way I'm gonna pray for Iman Audrey. I'm praying for Miss Tail Bear. The same way I'm praying for Akoti Marsha. I'm praying for Akoti Hate Me. The same way I'm praying for Ak Tevin and Ak Michael. I'm praying for Ak and Aki, who hates me, as they are my friends. Now, that's what the word says, Mr. Kyle. That's what I'm trying to learn to do also. <laughs> now, y'all see why I, why I was running from it today? <laughs> because we have to learn to do these things. We have to still learn that while we ask the most high to forgive us for our sins, transgressions, and iniquities, in the brick kind of shot, when he's telling you about how many times to forgive someone because of their sin, we have to understand that he was merciful unto us the same way. So if we're going to be as our father, the way our father is forgiving us, and we're going to ask him to forgive us for things that we don't deserve to be forgiven for, we're going to have to learn to still pray for our brothers and sisters who don't mean us well. It don't mean we have to be in their company, but it does not mean that we have to hold animosity. It does not mean that the hate that they have towards us that we express the same level of hate back to them. The more hate they pour to you, you still pour out that love. But keep yourself safe while showing love. Keep yourself safe while showing love. If a serpent show you it's a serpent, as Saul showed David, he saw the serpent. David said, I will not do him no harm. I will not touch and do him no harm. And I keep showing him that I love him. Oh, David, I'll never do it again. Yeah, you done told me that before. I, I'm not coming back with you, Saul. But I love you, Aki. So keep yourself safe while loving them.
So he said, I behave myself as though he was my friend or brother. Now give me this last part, uh, Adon, after the colon. Okay, you say you want to read it right back at the um give me verse 14 again. Give me verse 14. Mm -hmm. Okay, 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 the dog. Verse 14. I behave myself as though he had been my friend or uh, brother. I bow down heavily as one that mourns for his mother. You hear that? He said, I bow down heavily as one that mourneth for his mother. Mishpachah, this is the word of Yah for the children of Yah. This is the word of Yah for the people of Yah. We have a lot of growing to do before we become perfect in Yah. We have a lot of maturing to do, Mishpachah, and it is not easy. This level of love is affliction. But we're called to do it. For those that was against him, he said, I mourn heavily for them, or I bow down heavily and mourn as for his mother. That's some heavy crying out. He did, meaning as I was mourning for my mother that was sick, I mourn for this individual. And though it don't say it here, you see he's laid it out as a friend, as a brother, as I mourn for my mother, we have children. If your child is sick and you pray for the most high to deliver your child when they're sick, if you pray for the most high to deliver your brother when he's sick, if you pray for the most high to deliver your mother when she's sick, that's the same way we're supposed to be praying for our brothers and sisters who are well in physical being, but sick in their mind, sick in their ruach. Cry to the most high of freedom so that they can properly be atoned for as we're trying to atone for ourselves. That's the level we have to grow to, Ms. McCall. Hallelujah. 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 In closing, let's jump to the book of Jonah, chapter one, Kanaka. So I just want to cover that in this also, that the way our forefather, David, said he afflicted himself was the same way Daniel afflicted himself with fasting and prayer. When they were sick, when others were sick, said he humbled or he afflicted his soul with fasting and prayer. There is power in humbling yourself before the Most High with fasting and prayer. There's other ways we can do it, but traditionally, customarily, and according to the commandment, this is how we atone or we afflict our in the flesh or our soul. When you get it, cannot y'all get it for me? Jonah chapter uh, one. Jonah chapter one. Now the word of God came unto Jonah, the son of Amittai, saying, "Arise, go to Nineveh, the great that great city, and cry against it, for their wickedness has come up before me." But Jonah rose to flee unto Tarshish from the Joppa. And he found a ship going to Tarshish. So he paid the fare thereof. And so, we can drop the, so we can drop the rest of it. We ain't going to go into him getting into the belly. But what we're seeing is Jonah was given a duty to go to where? Nineveh. And talk to this wicked, talk to them against their wickedness that Yah's going to come destroy this place. Was Ninevites, Israelites, Ninevites were not Israelites. So the Most High still told Jonah to go speaking to them who's full of wickedness in Nineveh. Jonah didn't want to obey that, so he tried to run away from the duty and he didn't want to go to the Ninevites. But let's move forward to chapter three. Same book, but chapter three. Jonah 3, verse 1. And the word of Yah came unto Jonah the second time, saying, Arise, go unto Nineveh, that great city, and preach unto it the preaching I bid that I bid you. 
So Jonah rose and went to Nineveh according to the word of Yah. Now Nineveh was an exceeding great city of three days journey. And Jonah began to enter into the city a day's journey. And he cried and said, yet 40 days and Nineveh shall be overthrown. So the people of Nineveh believed Elohim and proclaimed a fast and put on sackcloth from the greatest of them even to the least of them. So, so hold, so hold, so hold. These are not even Israelites. These are Gentiles of another nation. These are pagan or heathens. All those terms that we may want to use, right? The Most High told Jonah on one occasion, now the Most High's word come to him now on the second time, and he told him to go and proclaim this word to the Ninevites that in 40 days time, because of your wickedness, the Most High gonna deal with y'all and overthrow this place and destroy this place. Now I've heard some of our sisters already say when I asked the question earlier about this faith that one must have to have. So it says, and Jonah began to enter the city a day's journey. He cried and said, yet 40 days and Nineveh shall be overthrown. So the people of Nineveh did what? Believe Elohim. And they did what? Proclaimed a fast and put on sackcloth from who? The greatest of them, even to the least of them. We're going to be destroyed because of sin? What? Oh, man, we believe the Most High going to destroy us? I don't want him to kill me for my sin? From the greatest to the least, we ain't eat nothing. We praying and we crying out to the Most High. And we're going to ask for forgiveness because we believe the word of the prophet of Elohim that said the Most High is going to come judge us because of wickedness. So this is a nation that's not Israel, the Most High's chosen people that submitted to the will of Elohim, knowing that judgment was coming. One thing that we know Israel is that we don't know the time or the hour. But our Elohim has already told us from the beginning of time. Here are your instructions. You don't have to wait till the end. You don't have to try to predict the prophecy of when the end is coming. The end for you or the end for us is when we leave this earth and we don't get a do-over after that. So this life that we are living, in the Most High's word, it says there are blessings and there are curses. Blessings for obeying, believing and obeying and curses for rebelling and not believing and trusting in the word of Elohim. So though we don't know that time, unlike the Ninevites, we already know that time. That time is whenever the Most High come for us that if we have been in sin and not repented of our sin, we have no good coming to us. The Most High who the church has taught is a mean God in the Old Testament. No, he's a loving God that has already given us instructions and let us know if you do this, you shall be blessed and there's a good place for you. But if you break these and you rebel against them, there's no good coming to you. So whenever that time may be, whenever that time may come, make sure you have a good report card before your father. And as we all know, we were looking for the, the, the teacher to give us a curve, uh, 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 what, what you call it? Uh, when they let you retest and make up the grades, what, what's that called in, in school? No, I know it's a retake, but if everybody mm -hmm. made low, they let you try to take the, the, the class over, the test over. Y'all heard that? It's um, a curve. It's a curve? Yeah. yeah. So when they let you get that curve, the most highs let us get a curve every year. Hallelujah. Yom Kippur, we don't deserve it. He's already given us instructions. Do you know what Yom Kippur is doing? Letting us see what we still fail. And they want to say the most high of the Old Testament is a mean, hateful God. He's an Elohim that's full of mercy, compassion, and love that judges on a curved system. You have messed up once again, but you still have an opportunity to correct that behavior. Yom Kippur is right around the corner. Yom Teru is letting you know you in the Tekufa Hachanah. You in the end of the year. You in the end of the feast season. Examine yourself. Get that mess out. And you still have an opportunity because his grace and his mercy endure forever. Hallelujah.
Mm, 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 mm. Let me get back to the script. So the people of Nineveh believed Elohim and proclaimed a fast and put on sackcloth from the greatest of them even to the least of them. Verse six it on. For the word came unto the king of Nineveh, and he arose from his throne, and he laid his robe from him and covered him with sackcloth and sat in ashes. And he caused it to be proclaimed and published throughout Nineveh by the decree of the king and his nobles, saying, Let neither man nor beast, herd nor flock taste anything. Let them not feed nor drink water. But let man and beast be covered with sackcloth and cry mightily unto he. Yea, let them turn everyone from his evil way and from the violence that is in their hands. Who can tell if Elohim will turn and repent and turn away from his fierce anger that we perish not? And Elohim saw their works that they turned from the evil way. And Elohim repented of the evil that he had said he would do unto them, and he did it not. Hallelujah. So that king of that area told small, the oldest, to the youngest, to the animals, we all putting on sackcloth. Ain't nobody eating nothing. Ain't nobody drinking nothing. We gonna fast, we gonna cry. Now who knows if the Most High is gonna forgive us or not, but we gonna repent of this wickedness we've been doing. And it said the Most High saw, he heard what they were doing. He seen that they repented. He seen that they humbled or they afflicted themselves for their sin. And it said the Most High heard them and he did what? He turned his anger away from them. So Mishpachah, in closing, we're coming up on the Day of Atonement next week. Prepare yourselves, prepare your house, your mind for Yom Kippur, for the Day of Atonement. Start getting yourself prepared too fast. What I normally do is, before going into, I make sure that when I go in, I'm hydrated. I make sure I have plenty of water already in my system so that I can sustain throughout that time period of no food, no water. I try to make sure that I have prepared myself with a meal at a timely hour, a hearty meal that will last me because I know I'm now about to have to release all myself to the most high and I will not be eating anything. And yes, your stomach will growl and you will feel them stomach pains, but what is greater? That stomach pain or that salvation? That stomach pain or that deliverance from all the mess that we have done in our lives against our father who gives us a curve, Yom Kippur, an opportunity to correct our wrongs that we have done before his presence. Mishpachah, love Yah your Elohim with all your heart, soul, and might as you coming up on atonement. And the second command is like unto it, love thy neighbor as thyself. Hate not your brother or sister in your heart. If your brother or sister is wrong, you're doing wrong to you. Don't allow yourself to also become bitter against them, but love your neighbor and pray for them as King David prayed and fasted for one that's sick. So even in your atonement, still also ask the Most High to forgive those who you know may not has as of yet let go of that bondage of Shaitan, that hatred, that anger that's within them. Ask the Most High to help them with that so that they can one day and hopefully this atonement also be atoned for. And also remember, Mr. Bacow, those people who you have offended, go and get those things right with them as well. And there's a script we didn't cover, but in the Brit kind of shot, it tells you, woe to them that offend one of his little ones. But he said, offenses will come. Let us try to be mindful that we're not the one that's causing the offense purposely and from ill mannerisms. And with that, Mishpachah, I give all praise, all honor, all esteem to the Most High Yah. May his name be esteemed always and forever. And may his mercy endure unto us as we are laboring, trying to return back to him in spirit and in truth and walking in obedience to his Torah. So with that, Mishpachah, all honor and esteem be to the Most High. Torah Yah for Yom Teruah. Torah Rabbah Abba for Yom Kippur. And Torah Rabbah for Sukkot, as well as all the Moedim. Torah Yah to all those who are already in atonement this week or already in Yom or already in Yom Kippur that may already be in Sukkot or those who have already or just completed it as they were attempted to do what we are doing now. And Abba, we ask for the day when you actually return us all to the same time 
so that we're crying out to you with one voice as one man in the streets yielding unto you. But until that time, continue to forgive us all for our sins, transgressions, and iniquities. So brothers and sisters, I love you all. May the most high continue to increase in each and every one of us. This level of affliction that we have to grow to, Mitch Bakai, is us growing to a level of perfection, which we have not yet reached, but we're trying to get there. So follow the examples as written and ask the most high for the increase. I plant, may the most high increase. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I now yield the floor to the eldest. And because we're gentlemen, our three imams first, because we're gentlemen. <laughs> so we're gonna start off first. We give all honor and esteem to the most high for Imam Audrey, uh, who's been with us for a very long time and standing strong with us as we stand in him. So Ima Audrey, we're gonna open the floor to you. Then we're gonna open it to our beloved Ima, Ima Newkirk, praise the most high for her. The, the most high has amongst us been standing with us for a very long time and bless and praise be to the most high for Ima Shoshana, which will be speaking third. And we praise the most high for all of our Imas that the most high blessed us with. So Ima Audrey, the floor is yours. I just wanna say shalom again. And that this is a, it's a toe toe study as always. And you know, atonement in the beginning seemed difficult because I was not in the habit of fasting or what have you. But as the years went on, it's got to the point where each year it gets easier and easier. So um, I praise Abba for the, re the review that you do every year, what have you. And I just want to say, ouch, 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 because some of the information that you covered today stepped on my toes. So it was a toe study. And also, I wanted to comment on the two-minute warning. And um, Matya, our verse 14 and 12 summarize it all because there are times when I want to do something because I think it's a good thing. However, I'm learning to consult Abba because even though it's a good thing, it may not be for me to do. So praise Abba for the two of you. And I pray that you will continue to allow him to use you both. Toda. Uh, praise honor, see me to the most high. May his name be esteemed. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you for your words, Ima. Hallelujah. Praise Yah, praise Yah, praise Yah. From the um, culture study, learning about our culture, that we supposed to do our culture, and uh, two minute warning, learning to obey what Yah tells us to do, not man. And uh, something that was always placed in us, even I, I keep telling you, you came out the homeless church. Um, anybody do wrong, they always tell us, pray for them. We pray for them. And I just thank and praise y'all how this word is coming out. And uh, uh, um, like she said, you know, that, that some moments were the ouch moments. And I just thank and praise y'all that you are teaching us how to treat each other. Praise y'all, praise y'all, praise y'all. Toe, 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 word. Hallelujah. All honor and esteem to the Most High. Bless his set apart name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, indeed. Praise Yah. My emails have said it all. I just sum up and say, Praise Yah. Hallelujah. Toe, toe, blessing, all three. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All praise, honor, and esteem to the Most High. Barack, his set apart name. Hallelujah. All right. So, uh, Zakan so Yaquab, uh, I see you and the Don Hanaya, y'all own two elders own. So um, do y'all have any words? I, I yield to uh, Maury Hanaya. Shalom. Shalom, Maury Hanaya. He said he yield to you. The floor is yours, Maury. Can, can you hear me, Adon? Yes, sir. Loud and clear. Okay, Shabbat Shalom, everyone. And Ima, I love you. Uh, Ms. Bukai, this was an awesome lesson. Maury, you always bring the fire around this time. You know, I shared with you this week earlier some things that I was, uh, you know, teaching my grandchildren and children this week. So it's such an important for us to really grasp the importance of this time of the year and the importance of why it's necessary for this time of the year for us to get it right. And the importance of us praising y'all for giving us an opportunity to learn year to year to get it right. Like you said, that curve that you just said at the end is, 
I don't think that we really appreciate that enough. I don't think that if there's a praise that you should be given that like the loudest praise, it probably should be for that. You understand? Because it's a curve that we, we don't deserve, nor did we earn. However, it's given. Like, just like love. We don't know love unless he first loved us. So it's the same thing with this yearly thing. And I just, I really stressed it to my own children, grandchildren, of why I wanted this to be my first lesson to them to, you know, as all the other things I want them to know, I wanted them to start here because I needed them to understand the yearly thing that we're given. And, and you brought it home today. So I just want to say hello, y'all, for you. I appreciate you. I can't wait to see you. You know what I mean? You know, I'll be there soon. Um, and, and like Ema said, we'll cut some codes. I, I sent you, a, it, 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 cuts, it cuts some toes sometimes. You know what I'm saying? Because sometimes you bring your own self back in the check. Like, you know what? Yeah, I probably need to recheck this one time. You know, I might need to recheck this one time. But uh, hallelujah for the most high, you know what I'm saying? And the sword plate that he gives us in that heart. You know, when he gets to start going in and circumcising your heart, you know? So I praise for you and for true light. And I thank you. And I'll see you soon. And we love you too, Adon. Look forward to seeing you soon. Um, and, and like you said, about stepping on some toes and it cuts us. Uh, my Isha uh, made a statement early uh, and she was re referring to is how the priests have to first make atonement for themselves. So as you were saying, like we who are in leadership, when we go back, we revisit this stuff. We're like, ouch, like, you know, like, man, I'm teaching something that's cutting me. Like, you know, like, man, I got a work to do, you know? So, but yes, Adon, I do look forward to uh, us getting together and, and continue to, uh, the discussion uh, on, on some of those uh, comments that you made. Uh, uh, in regards to today's lesson, but taught up for your words of encouragement always, Don. And as and, and one thing that he said, uh, the Most High has us, you know, for the people that say he's a mean God in the Old Testament, he has us on a system that we don't even deserve. Like the, the, the way he forgives us and allows us, after he's already told us what he would do and he still allows us opportunity back, we really don't deserve that, but he, he, he gives it. He's always been a merciful Elohim from the very beginning. So hallelujah, Toda Don. Um, Don Yaqua, the floor is yours. Hello, yeah, hallelujah. Uh, told told me old lesson, uh, Maury. Um, and 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 the emo and and um, uh, Maury and Hanny, I pretty much um said it all, really. You know, the only thing I, I kind of it really harped on me today that really touched me today was um, you know, forgive your enemies. And, and we know that the enemies are our kinfolk <laughs> that it's talking about. And that's hard to do because, you know, it, it, it's, it's, it's more personal if my family uh, offends me, you know what I mean? It's like, uh, it's, more, it's more personal, like um, how could you do this to me? Whereas, you know, we easily forgive a stranger. Okay, yeah, all right, all right, it's all right. You know, because most of the time we, we might not have to see them ever again, but but the family member is always going to be in my face, and it's always going to be reminding me that you know I ain't like the way you treat me. I didn't like the way you did this to me, and it's hard to say, you know what, like like King Dawid, that you know I, I forgive you, I still love you, I just you know I don't I I know better than to hang around you just like what you said. So you don't provoke me to hurt you, and I don't want to give you the opportunity to hurt me. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, but to try and reconcile that, uh, try and reconcile that, especially like we're coming up to atonement. If we want to offer these gifts, <laughs> you know, try and settle that, try and fix that with your with your brothers and sisters. So tobe, tobe lesson. And just like uh, the emo said, ouch, ouch, ouch. There's a lot of growing that needs to be done. Uh, speaking for myself. Hello, y'all. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you for your words, uh, Zakane. Thank you for your words. All praise, honor, esteem be to the most high. And like you said, uh, when my Isha sent me that message, like, yeah, I, you know, uh, I had I already stepped my toes. Uh, well, the most high already stepped on my toes. And, and I was like, man, I got to read, read this for, I got some stuff I got to work on. So praise be to the most high for his set apart word. But that's what we have to have. We have to have a heart where we can receive what's written, you know, um, as it's written. So um, at this time, I, I just want to uh, let everyone know that, again, for us, because, you know, there's a, a calendar to date 
um, that uh, some will be observing uh, uh, Yom Kippur. But uh, for us, it starts on the evening of the 6th. So the evening of the 6th next week, the evening of the 6th is when Yom Kippur starts for us. Some will be starting at the evening of the 5th, but we'll be starting at the evening of the 6th and it ends the evening of the 7th, okay? And we'll be getting together for a Sukkot um, beginning October the 11th, you know? Um, and so just wanted to let y'all know that's when the atonement is coming up for us. And, you know, uh, we will be observing uh, online together. Some may actually come together that's, that's close to this local. We may have a, a gathering at some point, but we will still be online for that. But we'll be uh, posting service times and everything for uh, everyone to receive that um, as we move forward to atonement. So, but just so you know the date, so you can keep it in your own house. And as normal, um, um, on atonement, just so everyone already knows, we can't put this out the same way that we had the prayer line open for prayer, as well as many lesson and question that Q and A segment on the day of atonement. We will be having the prayer line, the noonday prayer line open um, on that uh, on the seventh on that day portion of atonement um, for prayer, as well as discussion and short lesson and words. So. I'll pray to the most side so we can encourage one another through that time. All right. So at this time, I'm going to uh, yield the floor to Sarya Hanan. Uh, Sarya Hanan, if you will do the uh, closing tefla, uh, we now open the floor to you, Adon. I turn the floor to Ima first, then I put Tyler down. You got to put Ima on. Okay. Uh, I just want to remind everyone that the Cash App and the Zelly information will be in Telegram for those desiring to contribute tithes and offerings or to our Helping Hand Ministry. And I'd like to say, Tora, may Abba be, Abba bless you, may He be gracious to you, and may He grant you shalom in the coming week. Tora. Hallelujah, Hallelujah, Tora, Tora, Ima. Sorry, honey. Hey, Tora, Tora. Before I pray, I just want to make one quick announcement. Um, at the more stage, y'all the poor coming up in Suco. I know a lot of things going on, but if y'all need any assistance, even financially, anything, contact myself, Maurice Shamak, Sakane Yakwa, Ima Audrey, Ima Nuka, or Ima Shoshana. Um, just let her know, man. We, we would like to see everybody make it to Suko. They make it. We want to have an awesome Suko as a Mr. Kai as a family, praising, joyful with the most high. So uh, if y'all need any assistance, you know, to anyone in leadership. Um, told out for the lesson, Maury, was the total lesson, and it's right on time. I've been down for repentance, for afflicting our soul. Told us I came for the culture study, man. It's, it's what we need, man. We need that culture, man. And Adon Kanaki, I continue doing what you're doing with the two minute warning, man. It's it's, it's, it's awesome. So I got one quick question for Zakane Yakwa. Are uh, we doing the sixth uh, language study at six today? King, King. King, okay. We'll be doing the language study at six today. I have the uh, Zoom up at 555. Y'all want to take part of the language culture. I hope y'all have a blessed rest of the Shabbat. It's all clear of mind, face to the east. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Abba Yah, that's our Shabbat Shalom to you, Abba. As you created the heaven, the earth, the sea, and everything with him. In six days and resting on the seventh day, you gave us a day of rest. Hallelujah for that day of rest. Toda Yah for your sparing of your children through your wrath, through the hurricane, Abba. As you was cleansing this earth, Abba, from the witness that's gone around on the four corners of the earth, Abba. So Toda Yah for sparing the families from your wrath, Abba, for the ones that's trying to seek you, Abba, trying to do right by you, Abba, is searching for you, Abba. So Abba, we your children, Abba, asking you to grant us your spirit so that here on this earth that you created, we may be united 
with you through your salvation that you has given us. May truth dawn on us with its light that you shine upon us, bringing joy no matter what happened to us. May all the pain in our lives be turned into birth pains of a new life in which we can rejoice together as a people, as a family, as a community album. A people prepare for the struggle on this earth, which are called to battle and led to victory. Because this battle that we face, Abba, our trust, our cry to you, Abba, is our victory, Abba. Because you fight the battles that we cannot fight, Abba. You protect us from the wickedness that we can't protect from ourselves, Abba. So told us, Yah, for yet your Torah, our foundation, our instructions on how to protect ourselves, how to be obedient to you, how to get your divine power to be our hedge of protection. Grant that we may not be blinded by darkness, Abba. The darkness of wickedness, but not the darkness of night. Because your light shine through the day and your light shine through the night. Hallelujah. Share that clear light on a new life that is coming, Abba. For your renewed covenant, Abba. May you always, Abba, be with us. Continue guiding us, Abba. As we are getting ready to afflict our souls, Abba. For Yom Kippur, Abba. For your day of atonement, Abba. That we ask for your atonement for our sins, Abba. Our transgressions, Abba. Our equities, Abba. That we had committed, Abba that is against you, that are against each other as a family, as a community, as a mispacar house. That we continue our loving each other as we love you, Abba. Because we all are your children. We all are your creation, Abba. And you want what, what is best for us. Torah, yeah. Torah, yeah. Torah, yeah. We love you. We serve you. We honor you, Almighty Yah. And we esteem your set apart name. May Yahuwah bless you and keep you. May Yahuwah make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. And may Yahuwah lift up his counsel upon you and give you shalom. Blessed be you, Yahuwah Elohim. Blessed be the name of Yahuwah Elohim. And blessed who come in the name of Yahuwah Elohim. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Shalom. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Mishpaka, enjoy the rest of your Shabbat, you know, with your family, you know, spending your time with the Most High, and uh, we'll see you back on for those who tune back in for the language portion. Um, I love you all, Mishpaka. I'm going to say a haben shalom, a haben shalom. We teach and every one of you. Shabbat shalom. Haben 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 shalom.